Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of That Can't Be The End with Phil and Ben. Hey, this is episode five of That Can't Be The End. This is Phil and oh, this is, uh, Ben. Ben oh, sleepy. Shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't feel this sleepy until, uh, I mean, just now. It's just starting to hit. I'm going to get more coffee, but... All right, and uh, we had a few movies we were thinking about. We finally ended up on 10 Cloverfield Lane. And uh, I had some criticism on I don't give enough backstory or, or anything. And the thing is, is I really want you to know what movie we're going to do and for you to do the research and watch the movie. Like, this is a little bit more... I mean, this is a bit more... And, you know, one of the reasons why I jumped on this podcast is because I, I, I got the impression for me like this was a little bit more in depth. Like we were really going to be like talking about the movie and not just like factoids. and. But there's only like five fucking films that we can really go in depth with holes, you know. Right. Uh, some of these films, you know... Well, but I mean, I, I, what I'm saying though is, I, I, yeah. I thought the podcast, the gist of the podcast, was you need to have seen the movie before. Yeah, like watch the movie, listen to the podcast. We're going to talk about. You know, if you want a different experience, you know, there there are other movie podcasts, but this one, yeah, this is more specifically like if you've already seen the movie and you've already digested, like it. companion piece. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I picked two movies. One of them was Ten Cloverfield Lane. And the other one is one that I'm excited to watch called Spontaneous, which just came out this year. We're probably going to do that uh, next week or next. Yeah. Next episode. Um, we have to both, you know, sit and watch that, though. And uh, Ben hadn't seen 10 Cloverfield Lane. And mostly because I just like I, I told you, or we it was in Cloverfield it. Universe. Right. And I didn't I don't just generally I just don't, I generally like just don't like J.J. J. Abrams. And I don't like fine found footage movies or movies that look like they're recorded off a handy cam unless no. it's Blair Witch. And I thought Blair Witch was amazing. I, I, I am in that. I'm pretty I don't know which one's the majority minority anymore. I thought I thought the majority of people hated Blair Witch Project. I loved it. I, still I, like I am it. in I am in that group of people that thinks it's just trash. But I yeah, I Did I, you watch I, when it came out? No, because I was like six. Yeah, that's right. I forget how much older I am. So <laughs> But uh, the hype behind Blair Witch I mean, was it was the same I mean Cloverfield was more or less Blair Witch for people my age. I was true. I was fourteen. It was freshman year when Cloverfield came out, and there was very much the same sort of hype around it. You know, the, the advertisements on TV didn't show a whole lot of the monster footage, but it yeah. was like you know, oh, found footage movie, and and I th- I think much like the much like the Blair Witch Project, where there was a lot of hype, and it seemed like people were overwhelmingly you know oh they, disappointed they were, they were putting up like websites and, and t-shirts of like missing these people are missing right these people showed up missing after this so it was a very cool and like then, propaganda thing where, and then after the movie was released on dvd i remember renting it and watching it and just like i was just like what, what the fuck is this, this is i horrible. loved it i did, well no i mean cloverfield i did not oh. like cloverfield no, I, I didn't watch Blair, cloverfield blair witch was just underwhelming it, it, it wasn't nearly as like actively well, I would say I would say the Blair Witch Project is passively bad. Like they yeah. weren't setting out to make a bad movie. They oh, yeah. were like, let's do a good job, and it just fell a little well, flat. And then they also Cloverfield. There was a lot of unintentional improving done in Blair Witch. Like let's fuck with these people that are making this movie, right? And like like the the crew members would like make noises in the middle of the night, and I liked that. I liked how but they Clover... beat on the tent. And Cloverfield all that is more like like they were act like it, they were actively trying to make it a not good movie you know what i mean they're just trying to make a movie and some people take a budget and go in to make a movie and they make a movie and i can't whether it's remember good or if not, it was but... family guy i'm pretty sure it was family guy but i feel like one of those one of those animated adult sitcoms had a a, a joke about cloverfield Oof. and and it was like it was like the found footage and it was just like oh you're the no it was robot chicken robot chicken did a cloverfield okay. bit, and it's just like oh there's ten copies of the same generic douchebag. It's just like the same guy all the time. Yeah, it. yeah. It's like that was that was that was one thing that re- I really stuck out. It's like but, the whole movie is just like these five replaceable yeah. white faces. But John Goodman's in the movie. And no, I was I'm like, talking about the original yeah, Cloverfield. Yeah, the, but, this Cloverfield line was surprisingly good. I really enjoyed that actually. 
Yeah. I, uh, and there were certain things about the movie that were really interesting. I'm going to jump in some of my bullet points. Well, and, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little disappointed in myself that I was so cynical for five whole years that I was just like, oh, I have so much better taste. I'm not going to watch this. Oh, well. And it turned out it was pretty good. Yeah. I, you know, and we can say John Goodman fucking steals his show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I really hope after the filming, uh, he went to a doctor to check out his back from carrying that film. <laughs> but yeah. No, not to say it was bad, but I mean, he really fucking, he was the attention in that movie. Oh yeah. No, he, he was great as Howard. And I absolutely loved it. And he's it, just a great actor. Though, yeah. Right? In, in my brain, I'm like, okay, Ben hasn't seen 10 Cloverfield Lane yet. You know, he, I think he would sit there just going, holy shit, John Goodman. So fucking yeah, oh, yeah, cool. He is. As this like, well, you made a point when we were watching the yeah. movie that John Goodman plays really good villains and he oh, does yeah. Barton Fink, brother, oh, where yeah. art thou? Oh, yeah. uh, Cloverfield Lane. There's a handful of others. I'm sure that just aren't coming to mind right now, but, Oh, dude, he's so fucking good as a villain. Yeah, and he he's... But, I okay, let's not call him the villain, but let's call him... Uh, he's good as being this, like, misguided character. He's good at, at being complicated, because he, you know... Um, all right. Well, and we'll get to all that. I, I like to take things in a... In a, in a sequential flow so first off more linear yeah was michelle leaving an abusive relationship in the beginning of the film it's kind of what it sounded like okay and and later in the film i want to the the people at home didn't hear this but i I wanted to make the same i wanted to make the same joke on the podcast we were watching it her yeah her boyfriend's name on her phone says it's ben and i for one i'm I'm not a fan of this (laughs) anti-ben propaganda not all bens weird (laughs) No, that's I'm just being silly. But no, it definitely. I mean, sound like judging from the phone call and like you know, you know, it sounds like she was already trying to escape like an abusive relationship herself. Yeah, because she was just leaving, and a lot of it seems like the best time to leave an abusive relationship is when no one's home and you just kind of leave like a dear John letter and just right. pack your bags and leave. And that's what the setup was. And then a little bit later in the movie, she talks about how her father was abusive. Right. And it usually that. seems that people that are in abusive no, uh, I think that's upbringings like, tend to end up in abusive situations. I, I think that's been like clinically or like statistically proven to some extent, though. So you're not wrong. Yeah. So uh, is abusive relationships an underlying theme in the film, i.e. Howard's family leaving him, Michelle leaving her boyfriend, Michelle being trapped with Howard as a captor? Oh, shit, yeah. If I was, if I was, like, a, if I was like a college professor and I was teaching, like, I don't know, like a psych course or like an interpersonal communication course or something like that, like, this, like, you know, take, yeah, strip all the sci-fi and post-apocalypse shit away. Yeah. Like, this would be a really good movie to show in, like, a psych or a sociology or a communication course. I'm like, this is dysfunctional communication. This is a dysfunctional yeah. family. Because you were trying to find out, was Howard gaslighting her or not? Well, and it's weird. That, that's, that's actually one of the more, like, mind-fucky things about this film is, like... It's like a constant ping pong between like he's gaslighting them, but like there's a little bit of truth to the shit he's saying. But yeah. then like she finds the earrings and the help, and like it's back to gaslighting. But then spoilers. Yeah. At the end oh of the movie, yeah. There's spoilers. End of the podcast movie, you know, is a lot of spoilers. She breaks out, and what does she see? Alien spaceships. So it, it's. I don't know. I thought that was really interesting. Like, it, it, like, yeah, you know, fuck you, M Night Shyamalan. This is yeah. this is how you really keep people guessing because the whole time. Is John Goodman gaslighting them? Is he telling the truth? Is he crazy? Is she crazy? Like, it it, it had me. It had me guessing. Like, I, I, I mean, I like. I mean, without without like keep you surprised. Yeah, and I mean, without like sounding like I'm trying to give myself too much credit, but like, Knives Out. That was a good example. I saw, you know, I saw, at a certain point in the film, I saw the ending to Knives Out coming, and I was like, Mm -hmm. oh. That's I know who did it. That's yeah. you know what I mean. But like it's something like this, yeah. It's really it's really nice and refreshing when you go into a movie and you come away. You're like, wow, that genuinely I couldn't figure that one out. Oh boy, yeah, bully for you. But I also hate when you go to see a movie with a person they're trying to figure out the ending through from the get go. Yeah, they're like, oh, that guy said this about you know this guy, so he's the killer, and I'm just like, 
quit. Just trying keep it to, to yourself. Yeah, you know. I mean, I do the same thing, but it's in my head. I don't yeah, bother the other person. I, with it. I I try to keep my naivete and blindness to a movie because I want to. I want to enjoy the film. Yeah. I almost never go to the actual movies and see a movie that I haven't seen because I'm gonna pay what fifteen bucks. To see person. it once. Yeah, right. to, to go see a movie. Before popcorn, and... before the soda, before yeah. a box of Bunch of Crunch. Yeah. Which is really fun is when you sneak in a pint of rum yes. and do a movie theater. What's really fun, When, no, when I, we I'm saw gonna, Hook. I'm not going to say that on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. My, my wife and I went and saw Hook, which we'd seen hundreds of times. And I was like, okay, we're going to see a pirate film, so why don't you get some, like, Dr. Pepper or, you know whatever and uh I'll, I'll get a thing of captain morgan's and we just sat and kind of spiked our drinks well and not not that i've ever done this because i'm a i'm a good boy but if you have a, a certain white powdery substance that's fun to snort and <laughs> take that into the movies with you that is also but again i'm a good boy and i never I have done anything like I that don't, i've never i've never done any like like coke or anything but i just don't see the point in doing coke before a movie wouldn't you like get real high before a movie? And Again, not that I've ever done this before, so I wouldn't not. know. But I, th- I think it was more so just. I mean, that was the point in my life when I was like, I want to do every substance always, just because. I, it was just more so just being. It, it wasn't a let's do cocaine and see a movie. Ben, Ben was like, you got me a cocaine. <laughs> that, that was pretty much it. <laughs> Nah, I with with my addictive personality, I already have enough monkeys on my back. I've been offered, you know, lots of drugs in my life, and I'm just like, no, thank you. I really would prefer not to let my life be a dangling train mess more than what it already is. See, like I don't have an addictive personality with things like like I can pick up one cigarette. Like if I want to smoke just one cigarette, and I thought then, you were like, a smoker, and then like not smoke anything the rest of the year, I'll do it. Like alcohol, you know, stop whenever I want. My addictive personality is like. Like, uh, I bought uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars for the Switch. I literally cannot stop playing Mario Galaxy. That Those are the things I, I get addicted to. I would have just loaned that to you. I have it. I barely play Oh, no. I wanted a copy because yeah. Nintendo is going to stop publishing that game this oh, March. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to buy it now when it's only $60 as opposed to, like, two years from now when it's 120 because yeah. Nintendo is just assholes. Yeah. I don't know why they're going to not. Well, it's because Nintendo... <sighs> Because Nintendo are assholes, yeah. and all of the fans have Stockholm Syndrome, yeah. uh, myself included. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. I don't know how familiar you are, but there's a there's an old Nintendo game called Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. Copies of that used Ryan, to go for about $1,200. Ryan wants to get one of those characters tattooed on him. Oh, shit, yeah. Mr. Universe. Mr. Saturn. Mr. Saturn? Ryan's like, oh, oh I want to get Mr. Yes. Saturn tattooed on me. And I was like, I've never played this game. And he brought but it like, up to Skylar, and Skylar's like, I love that game. Like, used copies of that game can go up to $1,200 for a Nintendo game. And the thing is, like... You know, the game's the game's actually younger than I am. It was published in, like, 95 or something. And it's like, Nintendo easily could have republished the game yeah. or remastered it or made new copies, but they just don't. But it's not like they're going to get the money from resellers. No. But, I mean, it's, again, it's like... Well, like, comparatively, the, the new Xbox, the Series X, yeah. if you... It'll play everything. Yeah. Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Xbox 360, even original Xbox. Yeah, if you yeah. have an original Xbox disc and you put it into the Xbox One X, it will automatically download that game from the Xbox store onto your console for free. As it Because should. it recognizes you have the disc and you own it. But what I'm saying is, though, is there is none of that fan service, none of that backwards compatibility, none of that stuff for Nintendo. Who but arguably, you still want to switch. Yes. But, Ninten- but Nintendo arguably has the the best back catalog of classic games versus Xbox. Or did Sony. you did you download the the free NES emulator and the Super Nintendo emulator? Yeah, but the, on on Switch. Yeah, but the game selection is piss poor. Nah, it's still you know it's better than nothing. Yeah, it's I can still, still cool. Play, I can still play. Uh, I can still play Super Metroid and Kirby's Dream Land Three. Both of those games, yeah. if I were to buy them used, would be upwards of a hundred dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, Switch didn't have to. Nintendo didn't have to throw you that bone, and they still they update yeah, what's that's on true. there. I saw, yeah. Like maybe once a month, they throw but a few new titles in there. Nintendo could be doing things a lot better. I've got a lot of feelings on that. 
Yeah, I have a few games uh, on my Switch. If you want to bring one each week and trade them out, you know, <laughs> totally down with you know sharing some games. Have you licked the back of the Switch game yet? What? They were worried that children would swallow the Switch games, so they purposely made the strip on the back of the Switch game. Phil is actually takes... pulling out a Switch game right now. Oh, because I know see. you'll lick it. I know you'll lick it. Which one do we have here? Not gonna do that to Zelda. Yeah, Mario 3D. Here, lick the back of that. Where? Where on the back? The the metallic part. They Why? they flavored it sour. I don't really taste anything. Well, I don't know. Uh, well, yeah. They no. they flavored it like it's kind of like a postage stamp. Well, they or flavored like a, it sour, not a, not a so, stamp. so people like a, wouldn't eat it. It's like the adhesive you lick on a an on a, a, a That's what it reminds me of. But they were trying to like Gross. so there. Yeah, no, there's a whole joke like online when the Switch games were coming out. They're like, oh, they're gonna make the game taste bad, and there's all these people like, why put your effort into that? <laughs> I've gotten drunk and licked it and had other people lick it not that same game, you know, because, like, you know, coronavirus and all that, but still. <laughs> oh, I've gotten drunk and had people licked it. It's fine. <laughs> oh, very Phil sentence. Yeah. So, theme two is why was Michelle there? Did uh, Howard run her off the road by mistake and then feel obligated to rescue her, rescue her, as he said, or did he take her hostage for predatory purposes? It... it like, uh, like I don't want to. I don't want the people listening to the podcast because I feel like you know going back and re-listening to our other episodes so I can you know edit them and touch them up. I I, I feel like I say this quite a lot when you present me with like a, a two or three prong question, but like so again to the audience like I'm not I'm not being disingenuous or lazy like I just genuinely think like why I mean why not both. I mean, it genuinely seems like both. Like, I can't figure this character out. Like, on the one hand, like, there was a legit, like, alien invasion and, like, a chemical attack. He was right. He, he, but he did say, I was in a frenzy. Right. But he did, also... Is that the word he used? Something like that, he, I think. Uh, or, I think he said panic. Or, no. He might have said frenzy. But... Yeah. He, but at the same said, time, he you said know, he was trying to pass through the, the world earrings and the blood and the we'll help and the help scratched on it. No, but I'm saying, like, yeah, that, yeah. that sort of proves the point. I mean, you really could go either way with it. Like, he seems like he's got a screw loose and, like, he's kind of angry and, like, out to kidnap someone who looks like his daughter. But at the same time, like, if you're a doomsday prepper and you just got word that some shit's going down and you are speeding home and you accidentally hit a pedestrian, like, I can definitely see how the gears are clicking in his mind. He's like, oh, I've got food. I've got shelter. I've got the medical necessities. It's my fault that she can't re- I've got save the medical herself, yes, so exactly. I'm going to save Well, her. more specifically, like, he's definitely thinking to himself, well, I have all the medical necessities she needs. I can heal her. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, I, de- so, I mean, so it's believable on both fronts. It's believable that he did it intentionally, or I mean, the way I feel. But I like this though. I like how I like how yeah. vague and ambiguous this is. I, I like a movie that doesn't cuddle the audience and just give you everything you want. So, I've gone down the rabbit hole on fan theories on Reddit, and <laughs> for this movie specifically, for all the movies. Oh, okay. That's. Um, I, I yeah. always type in fan theories Reddit, and then uh, because it seems like Reddit's one of those places where a lot of people bring fan theories forward. Oh, no, no, that's if, that's definitely the place to go if you're looking for rabbit holes. So, um, I I went there, and there was websites they call it like augmented reality propaganda or a ar uh, arg Aug- it's uh, augmented reality game yeah but it's like essentially like fake websites and yeah. stuff like that so they had that it's like alternate reality gaming it's yeah. like uh, so they had that as propaganda like, like role playing uh, as extent. for this movie right and there are emails um from howard's wife back and forth about how the daughter's still alive. She ran off with the daughter, and they went to Chicago, and she left him. Um, and mm-hmm. it's just like, do you remember when you gave Michelle your father's medal, and you know, because it was so like precious to you, but then you blew up at her because she misplaced it. Like, 
he he means well, but like he his, screws up. Yeah, his temper. He loses his temper mm-hmm. a lot, and he's very like he he's not forgiving when when people make mistakes. Right. So, um, through all this um, augmented fake websites and everything, you find out he's tried to contact his daughter. And his daughter's still alive. His daughter does exist. His daughter is in Chicago with the wife who left him. I think that he was, like, in a hurry, in a frenzy, driving. I don't think he hit her on purpose. Because I don't think that he planned to um, uh, have extra people in there. Mm -hmm. You know? And then you meet Emmett. And Emmett says, you know, I... He was trying to fight his way in. Yeah. He said, oh, no, Howard didn't do this to me. I I, I did this getting it. Right. Well, and then later in the movie, too, you have that, like, disfigured lady who's literally trying to claw her way in. And, and that so, I mean, there's a lot me, of there's a lot of stuff to bolster Howard's claims. That leads me to the next question. Uh, should Michelle have helped the injured woman? Well, I want to go back really quickly. Okay. Just real quick before we move on, you had said something about you know, the, the the augmented reality and like yeah, the yeah. emails and stuff. Oh, it also the, says the, the augmented was still alive reality. In Chicago. And the augmented reality, it also had like work emails from the the company from the original Cloverfield movie mm-hmm. that like what slush or whatever they are. Um, they have alluded to. Why Howard has all this satellite information was because Howard was working with satellites for the company that will come up the monster in the first one. It's not put in the movie. Right. But it was like websites from the first um I mean they did the same thing with I mean they did the same thing with Donnie Darko with the tie-in websites and everything. Um but um but you said the emails confirmed that the, the he, wife and daughter left and went to Chicago. Yeah, but it, it's interesting though because someone I think it was I think it was John Goodman's character says something like, "Well, they're dead now," and Michelle says, "You know, well, how do you know?" But I mean, it's I yeah. mean, it's not it's not a central point to the, to anything. It's just it's just me wondering like, are they dead now though? Because he was right about an alien invasion and a chemical attack. So, like, are the wife and daughter now potentially dead in Chicago? I, I think no, he knows? thinks. I think he thinks anyone outside that bomb shelter is dead. Well, but there's good evidence to support that most people are dead. You know, yeah. Houston and Baton Rouge it seemed like they were pockets of resistance. Yeah. But still, you had the random lady. Mm-hmm. You have a bunch of supporting and anecdotal evidence that well, sounds like you know. And I do have most the next question up. that I ask will kind of go back and touch Should she on have helped the lady. Well, a lot of the next question is going to touch on um, the the locket and the help and all that. That's why I'm trying to kind mm-hmm. of push that off the back burner and bring that up. Try and keep shit sequential, but. Uh, anyways, um, do you think she should have helped the injured woman? I guess I could give, I could give, like, an answer of, like, within the context of the movie, or I could give, like, an answer of, like, my personal philosophy. I mean, within the, I mean, honestly, they're basically about the same answer, though. If it was, if it was me... And this this is gonna sound really selfish. Yeah. But if it was me, and I had a, a sweet bunker like that, and, and my shit was figured out, and there was like a legit chemical or nuclear or some kind of ground attack, and you know bad yeah. enough that you need some sort of air chamber or airlock. Yeah. Fuck no, I'm not letting someone else. I in. wouldn't have let her. I'm not her gonna either. risk the contamination. You know, you're, that's no. that's gonna be a second person breathing up all my air, exactly. eating my food, especially if like. Like, if I already have a partner down there with me, yeah. and we can repopulate as needed, like, yeah, you don't need to be any fucking part of this. We've got it handled, like... No, I agree. I agree. I wouldn't have let her in either, because she got... And, like, real... conversely, if I was that lady, if I was someone who wasn't prepared for the end of the world, which I'm not, I'm not a doomsday prepper, yeah. but, like, if that shit comes, like, I'm not gonna be running to a doomsday prepper, you know, in my neighborhood, like, hey, please let me in. Like, no, I understand, like... You know, I'm boned. They don't have a responsibility to let me in. Yeah. I can go to the public fallout shelter at the, you know, the city hall. Yeah. Yeah. 
<clears throat> no, I don't. I don't think she had any any moral or ethical uh, obligation. I don't either. To in. So, question four. This is one of the big theories, and this has theories that we're going to go back to that spiders off this. Was Emmett the real Venet, uh, villain in the situation? He fought to get in the bunker, but is he's trying to cause tension within the bunker. So if you notice... Yeah, no, I did notice that, and I couldn't quite figure it out, because he, he was the one at dinner, that's sort of, in that first dinner scene where it gets awkward, and she steals his keys the first time. Like, yeah. He's the one he's sort of... flirty with Michelle. Right, he's the one egging But he's also on. the one sowing uh, doubt in her head against Howard throughout right. the whole movie. Right. So it's just like, Emmett wants Howard's gun. Do you think that... He wants to kill Howard just because he's like. Well, kinda, it, kinda Howard. Parasitic. Howard. I. I always. I, I also thought it was kind of weird watching the movie how Howard flip flops because you know he tells her the story. You know, oh, I. I. I did this trying to fight my way in, but then he's all too gung ho to help her to fight her way back out. Yeah. And it's. I mean, it's just like. I don't know which, like you know. Okay. And the question at some is, point, some points in the movie though, it seems like he's believing Howard's bullshit. You know. But he, encouraged, and singer, okay. he but, encouraged but like her. like you're saying, though, he is so he's also the one sowing doubts. It's it's weird. He encouraged her to make the hazmat suit. The hazmat suit, right. okay. He but it was her that, idea. But it, there was only one. So was he going to kill Howard and then kill her and take the hazmat suit, or was he encourage her to wear the hazmat suit and herself leave so he could be like, okay. There's, there's one less person in here I have to deal with. So what's Emmett's goal? Is Emmett trying to pair up with Michelle as a romantic interest, or is he trying to have the bunker to himself? After watching it several times, I think he's trying to get the bunker to himself. I don't know. I don't know if he's trying to get the bunker to himself. I think maybe he was trying to get Michelle alone. Because... It, what did he stand to gain when John Goodman confronts them with that vat of acid? What does he stand to gain by throwing himself under the bus and trying to s spare Michelle? Because I don't think he thinks Howard's actually going to kill him. But, okay, even if he didn't think Howard's going to kill him, Emmett should have had enough common sense enough to realize, like, hey, this dude is ape shit. Like, he blows up at the littlest things. Yeah. Like, Howard should have known, like, no matter how sugar-coated you know, and how much he kissed his ass for that apology. Like, yeah. there was still going to be some kind of retribution. Howard should have known that. So, again, like, what did he have to stand to gain by throwing himself under the bus and trying to save Michelle in that situation? Okay. That's the only thing that throws a monkey wrench in this theory. And I get it, but it's also, I think... Okay, so let's let's table that, and then... I think... Yeah. I think, but I, it, I think it wanted, seems like the real villain yes, in a way. No, I agree because in he a, fought his way in, in a, there. In a roundabout way, he does seem like the real villain because he, he's, he's, he's he's playing everyone against each other. Yeah, I think though. And I have other. I think his that, apology to John Goodman is the most revealing. Yeah. Though I think that's when he's being completely honest. Because he says, "I want your gun because I want her to respect me like you." I think he doesn't want the bunker alone to himself. I think he wants the I think he wants the bunker alone to himself with Michelle, with Michelle. in his complete control. Yeah. And that's not possible. a girlfriend, not consensual. Oh, yeah. A fucking, you know, end of the world yeah. sex slave, you know, yeah. terrible situation. So this is a multi pronged question mm -hmm. and it's all going to wrap into theories. What's up with the locket? The help scrawled on the hatch glass. Why would Howard send Michelle into an area where there's evidence? Or did Emmett kill the girl and allow her to be sent there in hopes to frame Howard? Now, I'm going to go sequentially throughout the movie, and I'm going to bring up points that I want to make. Howard isn't good at lying, right. okay? But he's disconnected because he spent 14 years in the Navy, and he's just very much like cause and effect. We have a problem. This is the solution. Well, also, the point I made when you had said that is yeah. he's he's really used to living in a space like that. Bunker exactly. After spending 15 years in the Navy. He he probably likes that much more than like a big open yeah. you know, mansion or Although a house. Although he lives on a farm. But, he li but it yeah. seems like he spends a majority of his... 
that that yeah. farmhouse she runs to at the end is dilapidated as fuck. Yeah, no one's in there. Yeah, seems like even though he has land and a house, he he lives in that bunker. Probably had a breakdown when his wife left him. Right, and but I so, mean, although the, to the, be fair to the character of yeah. Howard, that's not so unreasonable. Like that was a really nice bunker. Yeah, like, yeah. I've always liked the idea of like alternative housing. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like if I can find like a bunker house in my price range, I would. I would totally fucking live there. That's awesome. So Howard doesn't seem to be a good liar because he already holds all the cards. He right. has no reason to manipulate anyone. If right. we're going to talk about manipulation, it's Emmett's going to manipulate. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, I mean, from the first from the first conversation he has with her when she when yeah. the door is open and she goes around the corner. I mean, from the second he opens his mouth, it's yeah, it's it's yeah. So Howard was genuinely surprised that the the hatch door to the, the the filter was was blocked. Mm -hmm. He was he was surprised and he was irritated. Mm -hmm. Why was he irritated? He was irritated because he could fit through the hatch, but now he needs people. Mm -hmm. And Howard didn't want to need anybody. Right. Through he wanted to be in that bunker by himself. He was only considerate of things he liked, things he wanted. Right. Uh, when his family left him, I think the way I feel about it is he was like, okay, well, it's just me and, and myself, and I'm right. going to stock this bunker with stuff that's me stuff, right. stuff that I like. You know, he, he didn't go, oh, well, I have a I need this. to plan to save other people because I'm such a generous... No. no. exactly, no. And he even says... There when he's introducing about this. When he's introducing himself to Michelle in the beginning, he's like, you know, yeah, my generosity says, like, is limited. Not. Right. And and, yeah, he even says, like, I didn't intend to have... Guests, basically. Emmett Emmett broke his way in. He could have he could have uh, said to Emmett when they were building the bunker, "If you help me build this fallout shelter, I might not be able to pay you a lot of money, but I'll give you a space in here." Right. No, he didn't want Emmett in there. Emmett right. fought his way in there. Okay. So, and Emmett, um, when they realized that they had to crawl through the air ducts, Emmett was like, "Oh no, I'll go." But uh, Howard's Howard's like, "Oh wait." Your 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 shoulders messed up. Your right. arms messed up. You can't go. Now, although that that's probably true, he probably would have just gotten stuck. I mean, but but the question is, um, could Emmett have fit through it otherwise? I mean, maybe he wasn't too much bigger than Michelle. Emmett could fit through it before Howard could. Howard wouldn't be able to get in there at all because Howard's a big guy. Well, yeah, Emmett could have gotten in there. Now, the, the theory that I want to pose that's all over Reddit is Emmett is a manipulator and he's a little predatory. Mm -hmm. Emmett knew this shelter was there. Did Emmett take a girl through the hatch and either keep her hostage or, or rape her or whatever, block the hatch, and then sneak back through the air vent... So Howard wouldn't find out. I don't think there's any way. I think it's I, possible. I don't think it's possible. Because Howard, again, like I said, it seems totally plausible because, again, that farmhouse is just beat to shit when you see it. There's just no way he's spending any time in there. The, the bunker is well-maintained. It's well-stocked. Howard lives there. Yeah. Howard has... A, like, like like you said, he's lived in the he lived in the Navy for 14, 15 years. Like he's used to being on a submarine. That's the space he wants to be in. How he is spending Howard would not let that hatch get blocked, but Emmett being manipulative, you know, and some people argue, did Howard have a have a breakdown and, and lure a girl in there to have like a well, like he a, might have. a quasi daughter and then murdered her? Yeah, I think so. Because I, I think Emmett could have done it more. Though. I know. There's. I just don't think there's any way. I, he was. Let's. I think. Hold on. I. I think that. No. Let's. Let's there, think about this. There, there's two options. There's sabotage or Howard being careless for the hatch getting blocked. And nope. I don't think Howard was careless. I don't think Howard was careless, and I and I don't think it's it's. I think Emmett's definitely a manipulator. Yeah. He's not a good guy. I think this is a situation where like the only like there's two villains. Yeah. You know, there's not one villain. There's Emmett and Howard. They're okay. both villains for different reasons. Yeah. But I don't think it was Emmett because again, let's break this down. I would I I'm positing that Howard again after his mental breakdown, Howard spins all of his time in this bunker. Uh -huh. If someone else breaks in, does anything, he's going to hear it. Yeah. 
too. I he definitely kidnapped a girl before okay. Michelle to pretend to be his daughter and then killed her because uh, why else would he have had that book? He had two pictures in that book. He had the missing girl and then he had a real picture of his real daughter. Why? How would Emmett know? To, and then again, if John Goodman is living, spending all of his time in this bunker, he already made a point to say, "This is, you know, this is my bedroom. This is yeah. completely off limits. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. just going to use it to use the bathroom." So there's, there's just no way he's sneaking around John Goodman while he's living down there and sneaking into his okay. bedroom. And again, how would Emmett know to hide that picture of the the missing girl in the book where there's already a picture of his real daughter? And then but, that picture of his real daughter, yeah. his real daughter looks like both Michelle and the other missing girl. Okay. Like, looks almost exactly like both of these girls, and then Michelle's wearing her Paris shirt in yeah. the same photo. He totally kidnapped what's, this girl. What's, uh, do you remember Howard's daughter's name? Megan. Megan. What if that girl, okay, when Megan left, he couldn't get rid of Megan's things. Okay, but what if that girl was a, like, close friend of Megan's and, like, friend of the family's yeah. and then went missing by a completely, like, different thing... But what if, you know, that book, he just had it because it was, you know, someone he was close to, but it was a friend of Megan's that's around a lot. I'm sure you had plenty of friends. And, well, let's let's brainstorm that maybe you had friends when you were in high school or right at a high school. And maybe you had, you know, people's houses, like, where you could just walk in and they were like, oh, Ben's part of the family. <laughs> no, I never really had You never friend. had that? Not, not that I can recall. Oh, I had I had a, a, a friend that, you know, I could just walk into his house anytime, day or night. And they're like, oh, you know, right. sometimes he does that. That's, you know, that's okay. Some, some people are like, you've been to my house enough. Why not? Right. Like, just walk in, you know. Right. And so it's, you know. Now, I think, I think all the signs, all the evidence is there to support that. Uh, I mean, John Goodman... He kidnapped this other girl, okay. you know, and tried to make. Because again, once once Emmett is killed, then John Goodman is like hugging her. He's like, "See, it's okay. We're a family again." Yeah, he's yeah. gone. And when they're playing, uh, when they're playing Pictionary, yeah, and he's trying to guess the word "woman." All he can think to describe Michelle is "girl." Exactly. Little girl. I was little thinking princess. that too. There's. There is just, but it, I don't think it's a sexual thing. I don't think. No, I'm not saying it's no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not saying it's a sexual thing. I'm saying this all proves the point. I think that John Goodman kidnapped. Do you think maybe John Goodman has kind of like a Munchausen thing? Yeah. Because okay, it, I can, I can see I think that. It's, I think or, it's, a, I think it's a Munchausen thing. I think it's also a little. Bit, I don't think he's trying to fuck Michelle. No, I think he's no, trying to no, replace I'm his not, daughter. I'm not yeah. saying he's trying to fuck her. That's, but that's what I, a lot of the theories go to. No, well then those people are fucking stupid. <laughs> I think it's more of a. I think I think the thing with the I think the thing with the first girl was more of a. Uh, 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 I'm trying to think of the character's name. Um, the, the John Steinbeck novel uh, okay. uh, of Mice and Men. I okay, think it's yeah. more of a Lenny thing. Again, I know with Lenny yeah. it was like sort of sexual. I'm, again, I'm not saying it was sexual, but I'm saying like it was a it was a, an, a Mice and Men type thing where I don't think, you know, he's so blinded he doesn't know that she, you know, he doesn't think it's a kidnapping and it's a hostage. And I think that her her death in his... In his hostage taking this yeah. this girl's death, I think it was one of those. I think it was like a mice and men situation. Where like, might have been embracing her, and he just suffocates her. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, but he's he's so obsessed with her being this okay, daughter. Okay, but then or being he would something. be afraid of Michelle going into that room, knowing that there's evidence. But what I guess I guess maybe he doesn't know there's evidence. Okay, the hatch. If the hatch if, door, the glass was locked from the inside. Maybe, but I mean, if you have a doomsday bunker yeah. and you have an open hatch yeah. somewhere in the middle of a field, yeah, yeah. you don't want just any Tom, Dick, or Harry to find this hatch and just work their way into your bunker. And if you're John Goodman, you have the keys, That's so right. you can realistically just go and open it any time you need to. Don't you to. think John Goodman knows that help is scrawled or scratched into that glass? But before this, before this air filter goes bad, he's got no reason to be back there. Because it seems like everything's been pretty hunky dory. And again, if he's, you know, the Emmett Emmett said the girl went missing for two years. 
if she's living down there every day with John Goodman for yeah. two years, there's going to be a time, there's probably going to be a couple of nights where John Goodman goes to sleep and this girl has a little pathway figured out. And so she gets, and she's using, you know, her earring to scratch don't, help don't in the glass. Don't you think it's strange that she totally could have done yeah. all of that for, you know, again, if John sure. Goodman is keeping her down there for two years until, you know, he kills her out of frustration or something happens. Yeah. If she's living in that bunker for a whole two years and she's smart and crafty, she yeah. can easily get around him and scratch that help. I think it's strange that knowing. John Goodman didn't say, oh, and while you're in there, unblock the hatch. Why? I mean, why would he? Because then she would have escaped. No, no, no. The hatch that led from the bunker to that room. Oh. Do you remember he's in that back room and he tries to open up like an attic right, right. staircase and he's like, well, it's blocked. You have to crawl in through the air shaft. Don't you think, wh why didn't he say while you're in there? I think that might have just been, I Panic. think that, no, I will, may, maybe, but I'm thinking like more, I'm thinking more realistically. I think that might have just been like someone didn't do their job with the continuity and the writing staff. Yeah. I think that might have just been. You know, like writing staff or someone maybe forgot that. I don't think that's super. I don't think that's like a super important point to hang up on. Yeah, and that's fair. But it's a point that I noticed this time around. Because also, too, I guess if you wanted to, if you wanted to, to go more into that point, if that hatch is blocked, but Michelle successfully went a different way and still fixed the air filtration system, if John Goodman has no plans to kill Michelle, in his mind, why does he need that passage blocked? That's just one less thing that he's got to do now. Now yeah. someone else can carry the weight of fixing the air filter. Yeah. So, I mean, that's another possible reason, too, is yeah. maybe in his mind, well, well, fuck it. Well, you know, Michelle can change the air filter. One of the on. theories, one of the fan theories is that Emmett kidnapped and killed Megan. And when he apologized to John Goodman, John Goodman looks at him and says, I forgive you, and then shoots him. And then maybe it's more than just, you know... I forgive you for double crossing me. It's I forgive you for everything, and I'm putting you out of your misery because he doesn't want Emmett to touch Michelle at all. But Maybe. Megan's in Chicago. How would have Emmett have killed Megan? It's fan theory. Yeah, that's a that's a ridiculous fan theory. Yeah, no. And and yeah, I agree. But and I mean, John you know, John Goodman just shooting Emmett. I mean, again, he was unstable. He was yeah. unhinged. He was a very angry, violent person. Yeah, that him shooting him in response to that is not out of the blue. But John, uh, uh, Howard doesn't want hostages and victims. But he he's in his brain. He doesn't want hostages and victims, loose ends. but he's creating them because he's tying up loose ends. You know, air quotes in his true mind, in his mind. True. He's tying up loose ends. I. Yeah, I. Uh, but do, to, do you to, feel to, that he was right to kill Emmett? No, I mean Emmett's a little shit, and like, what would you have done if you were Howard? Fuck, I don't know, man. That's that's impossible to say. Emmett's really that's fucking an, manipulative. That's an impossible fucking situation. Emmett's really manipulative. Yeah, but and I don't think it's just. Like, I don't think he deserved to die. Yeah. Because to be completely fair to Emmett, yeah, he was kind of a little shit. He was sneaky. He was manipulative. But, but. When she's going through his wallet, she does find that bus ticket. Yeah. So he was at least telling the truth about that. Yeah. And if he's telling the truth about that, then I really don't think... He was he, honest about getting in there. Yes, and I really don't he, think... He could have said, Howard did this to me. He goes, oh no, I did this to myself, breaking in. But he, he's still stirring the pot, constantly stirring the pot. Right. So he's, you know, there there's no innocent people in this situation. It's the end of the world. Um, so... Was Aliens a good ending, or was it better to end the film sooner? Was was it better for that to be something that they should have just kept vague, or how do you feel? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, if they want to tie it into, you know, the, the universe or whatever of the original Cloverfield movie, then yeah, I think Aliens are, you know, that's that's acceptable. And I don't think it was... You know, sometimes, you know, like, oh, it was aliens, you know, that's sort of a trope, and you know, what a, yeah. what a bad twist that's been over the years. Yeah. But here, I mean, it it kind of works. Th this movie would have been, the aliens work. And again, like, a, you know, like I just said, you know, the, oh, it was aliens, it's so cheesy and overdone. I think this movie would have been worse or cheesier if she opens the hatch and she gets out there, and it was like John Goodman said, if it was like the Russian army. 
and yeah. it's basically just you know Red Dawn. Yeah, but that would be fucking stupid. That would be cheesy. Dude. Aliens think, are not that bad in this movie. I think it should have ended when she gets out and sees that spaceship, and she's like, "Oh, come on." Yeah, no, I, I think agree. it should have ended right there. I agree. I, I agree. think the music should have swelled. And it should have been a long panning shot of like just like the field a bunch or something. Of spaceships, yeah, and then it should have just been rolled. Well, like that I would final, have been fine with that. Well, like that final shot where she turns down the the road and it zooms out and the lightning strikes and you see the silhouettes of all the ships. Yeah, that would have been the shot to end it on. Yeah, yeah. just like ten minutes earlier. No, I agree. The 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 rest of that ending is just like. It's, I mean, it's basically because there weren't any explosions in the movie, and they were like, okay, how can we fit five explosions into 15 minutes? Like, that that I, was really what that was I about. I think it's 15 minutes too long. I agree. I agree. You know, I, I don't like the last 15 minutes, and that's why I think it's good. Perfect for this, for this podcast. podcast. Good movie. Really kind of a shitty ending. Yeah. No, um, it would have it been much better if I they just the left it. I think it pissed me off more than it pissed you off. I, I think that, you know... No, well, no I'm, just, I'm just... I'm not being as vocal about it. What I really didn't like, and I didn't say this at the time, I was yeah. kind of saving it for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And this, is, this is a trope that I fucking hate yeah. because I play video games, yeah. so I see this trope all the goddamn time. But what I hated was the very end of the movie, you know, she's driving, and she hears something on the radio, and so she parks the car, and she backs up, yeah. And she turns on her radio, she turns it up, and it's, you know, oh, survivors in Houston, come here if you want to fight. Like, oh, a pocket of resistance, and she's going to go join. Like, oh, well, I've never seen or heard that fucking done before. That, I thought, was just, that kind of pissed me off. Because okay. that was dumb and cheesy, and but just like, of course the they're going to do that. The only reason why... It's not terrible, is because she. This is a reoccurring theme of helplessness with her character. No, okay. she even admits as much. And when she's talking about uh, how she was in an abusive household um, with her her dad, and then talked about how she saw an impatient father dragging his daughter, right? And like how he hit his daughter, and she wanted to help and stop, step in. And, well, like, she says, like with everything else in my life, I just panicked and ran away. Exactly. Right. So I think. That's her. No, it shows her metal. growing. Yes. Exactly. So that that's no. needed for her character arc. But I still would have. I don't need. I don't need to actually see the alien. Yeah. Nor nor you know seeing the spaceships. Cool. Did you see when that uh, spaceship went above her and was spraying like crop dust yeah. and spraying that shit? She put her like thing back right. on. Okay. So it, it was using poisons in the right. atmosphere. No, no, and I get that, and I get that. You know that thing at the end. That's her character growing. But I'm just. I'm so sick of the 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 alien disaster post apocalyptic yeah. movie goes through the whole movie and then at the very end, you know, what is it? Oh, the resistance fighters at the end, they're calling on the radio, you know, oh everybody come here. Like I cannot think of how many times that's been done. Oh yeah. Just like Yeah. Just anything else, please. Just I don't know, come on. That's yeah. cheesy and overdone. No, I agree with you. I think um but I agree. I think also I can't remember what I can't remember what movie it is, um, but there's like a sci-fi or a horror movie or God, I wish I could remember what I'm thinking of. But there's some movie where it's like that, where it's like there's some sort of vague, imminent threat, but you never see it. Is it The Mist? No. I tried to look that up to do that for this week, but maybe I'm just. But I don't know. But I agree. Like I think the movie would have been better. Like conceptually, if like she gets out of the bunker and like maybe you just see a ship far off in the distance, but like yeah, you don't need to bring that up into our face. Like it could have been a little vague with it. It could have ended with like it, again, a it's not bad ending it with like oh, it was aliens. Yeah, just I don't know. Better, <laughs> yeah, do it gooder. But but it was good. Yeah. For the majority of the movie. Oh, absolutely. I, I liked, you know, every now and then you see no, again, I went John in, Goodman lighten up. You I'm not going to, maybe not pissed off, but I definitely went into this with like a healthy level of skepticism. Like, man, Phil's having me watch this J.J. Abram movie. He doesn't know what he's talking about. This movie's going to be so whack. I was very happily surprised at like just how like... You even really? said you even said like the first like fifteen minutes of the movie was a really good opening to a film. How well, there was very little dialogue. Yeah, because I I really liked that opening sequence where, I mean, you know, you learn you know in about you know five minutes after it happens, you learn that she's you know getting away. From I think the, it's from great her. until she meets Emmett. No, well, I, well, what I thought was great is, you know, because. Especially, like, let's especially think of this in the context of 
someone who's not watching the movie five years after it's been released and you know I've, yeah. I've already seen some spoilers I kind of already knew what it was about so let's go back five years yeah. it's 2016 this movie just came out yeah. you're going to see it in the theater it starts and it's doing that you know there's no there's absolutely no audio from what she's actually doing her, yeah. her on the phone call or her packing yeah. her bags and it just has that score underneath her yeah. you know you don't know anything about this movie you have the impression that it's some kind of apocalypse movie yeah. until the until the next scene where she's talking to her, her boyfriend on the phone. You don't know that she's packing to get away from a boyfriend. Yeah. You go into the movie starting with that scene thinking like the, the doomsday event has already happened. Yeah. And that kind of threw me off, but I like that. But that but more generally just that whole like no audio only music. I like that. That that to me made the film start out in like a really good, creepy, like yeah. unnerving kind of vibe. So yeah. I was already like, yeah, fuck yeah. And then yeah, I mean like about ten minutes, five minutes later, that's when you know John Goodman hits her, and then as soon as he hits her, that's when the credits pop on the screen. Yeah, yeah that was that was fucking brilliant. I loved that. Yeah, really good start to the movie. Yeah, but yeah, I'm 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 pleasantly surprised by how much I liked this. Yeah. And that's why I like to catch you off guard with some of this stuff. Uh, there's several movies on the list of movies for us to get through that I haven't seen. Yeah, that I haven't seen. Yeah, you know, I, I, I haven't like... seen The Mist because I heard the ending sucked. Right. Yes. Yeah, gonna watch it. Oh, same. Stephen King said great stuff about I, uh, it, and he wrote it. I'm excited for you to watch Snowpiercer. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I've been putting that on hold where I can, you know, give it my full attention. I'm really excited for your, for, for, uh, a serious man. Yeah. That's the one I really want to do. I own a copy of it, but I haven't seen it yet. So just good. because like I hear it's, I mean, it, and I, I don't know, maybe it was because like I watched it and like a, a really like emotionally, like, I was feeling pretty weird at the time when I watched it and, like, but I don't know that, that film really fucking hit a, hit a chord with me. Like. It's a it's a dark comedy and it's just so light on the comedy. It's I, so dark and like I imagine that it's gonna be tragic. simple to like punch drunk punch drunk love. Kinda similar. And I yeah. really, really liked Punch Drunk Love. At first I wasn't sure like how to feel about it, but it took a while for me to get into it, but when I did, you know. Um, That's it's, a good movie. it's about, you know, repressed emotions mm -hmm. and, and finding something to fight for. And I, I didn't like about Punch Drunk Love that there was a lot of quiet scenes where there wasn't any like background noise. See, I like that. I like that. I, I'm very the other thing like, I like comfortable. Of, the other with, thing I liked about know. Punch Drunk Love is, um, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. There's a, there's a couple of great examples of people just need to be given the right script or the right opportunity. Yeah. You know, I like Billy Madison. I like Happy Gilmore. Yeah. I like Waterboy. I like, I like Waterboy and Click and all the the dumb. I, I couldn't get into Click. I still haven't seen it all I, just because it just it was. I saw it when bad. I was like thirteen with my grandpa, so it's, yeah. it's more of that sort of thing. But but I, I mean, what I'm saying is is um, you know nobody gives comedic actors credit for playing serious roles, and it's because. I think a large part of that is because I don't think, you know, with rare exception, I don't think these casting directors and people go looking for comedians to play serious roles because they assume that a comedian doesn't know anything about drama or tragedy. Funny thing about that is... But that's the complete opposite. Uh, Dumb and Dumber, that guy, Jeff Daniels. Oh, yeah. Fantastic actor. The reason they casted him in that movie... And he hadn't done comedy was because he was such a good actor. How right. could he not do a good job at right. this? You know? And I thought that was great. I really like... Uh, I think Jeff Daniels is perfect with Jim Carrey in that movie. Because he approaches it from a different way. Um, so. We do have other good news. Such as... You know? I didn't know that I was going to get such a big uh, response and such good feedback from this podcast from people. Mm -hmm. And we actually made the step to um, get a podcast hosting site. We uh, have gone with Podbean. We've heard a lot of good stuff about it. We've researched a lot of good stuff. And we wanted a site to where we could host all of our episodes on. And, and Podbean seems pretty user-friendly. Yeah, so uh, we've officially started putting money back into this podcast. Um, monthly fee. 
Um, so, I mean, that's cool. We might start a Patreon or something. We might do something to take donations. If you want to donate money to go towards, you know, our expenses, we would love that. Eventually, we're going to monetize this uh, I've been podcast. Trying to, I've been trying to think of, like, you know, most Patreons, you do that, and, you know, there's some sort of gift or something you have. Well, the gift we would do is we would do, like, 20 questions with Phil and Ben, and I would just ask you questions. Well, I was thinking also, I was also yeah. thinking also something we could offer. I mean, it's not very hard for us to record an episode. I was also thinking, like, someone like wants, like, a, a private... Uh, uh, hour-long episode on a specific movie right, that like, doesn't fit the theme. Right. Or, yeah. you know, maybe it's just one of their favorite movies. And I mean, yeah. that, that would be easy to record, like, a, a private episode for somebody. Just yeah. send it to them directly. Like, here you go. Definitely. And I definitely appreciate everyone, you know, that has been uh, helping us. Christian helping, pushing me to get this episode started. Ethan was one of the the people who, you know, helped with this idea and uh, encouraged it, someone I work with who, you know, said, oh, yeah, no, that'd be really great. You tell fun stories and you have good conversation. I really think you should do this. And What I would like to do, and uh, I, I hope we do it someday, is I, I guess we would have to find a movie that's maybe like a B movie. It might not fit our theme, but we'd probably have to find a movie where we wouldn't get... Do do a live episode at Colorado. like a movie theater and and no, but I mean more generally, I was thinking like a mystery science theater type episode where like a movie we can do that. like a movie is playing and we're just giving running commentary and while yeah. it's going. But that's well, why I'm saying it would have to be like like an old B movie or something. Well, not, not necessarily. I could probably the copyright violations true. or whatever. I I wonder if we paired with an actual movie theater like uh, Screenland Armor if they would you know take care of all that shit for us. That'd be cool. You know. Uh, or or we future. could do one where we don't record the commentary during the movie, and then after the movie we do an episode on it, and you know. Well, I mean, I guess if I hear people do live podcasts all the time, oh no, they do. You know. It's just, I, I again, I would like to do like a, a live mystery science theater type episode with a movie. It's just That'd be great. I don't, yeah. I don't know if if there would be trouble with like the audio of the movie being copyrighted. Like that's that's well, the only well, thing. What I what we would do is we would do I mean, like that's why like I would like to do a music podcast, but yeah. I don't I don't know the intricacies of I've, like I've tried being to able that. to use music and stuff. Yeah. What what I suggest that we would do is that we would um, not record us during the movie. We would record us after the movie, mm-hmm. and then the the privilege you get as paying to see us live is seeing us talk shit about the movie while we're watching it. You know, so it's like a like a two pronged sword. You mm-hmm. know, pay to see, pay to watch the movie with us and hear what we say during the movie. Um, listen to the episode uh, online after the movie. Yeah, that could work. And it would it would probably be something like that. And I bet. You know, if we got enough uh, people. Uh, also, we have a Facebook page. That can't be the end. Um, We're going to be updating that and whatnot. Yeah. And Although it's gonna, it's, we it's need gonna a, gonna a lot of likes and a lot of shares on that. Well, it's funny because we're releasing these episodes every Saturday or Sunday. So by the time people hear this, this is going to be pretty old news. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, but well, still. It's, it's still yeah. relevant. Fair. Were there okay. any more? Were there any more points or, or theories on? Clover no, Field I don't. I don't have any more points. I don't have any more theories. I mean, it's just like by the time I get bored talking about a talking point, I move on. <laughs> we move on because that's what we. Oh, do. We, we haven't had any trouble filling the hour. Hell, most of these episodes were going well over. So yeah, it's, yeah, we're fine. But you know, um, the this good, good news. Movie. Yeah, I, I like it. I you know it's I, I could actually watch John Goodman play all the parts in the movie and still think it'd be a great movie. John Goodman could play Michelle and it would still be great. He wouldn't be able to get in that vent, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, no, like I I totally uh, I'm I'm curious if we're gonna keep making this podcast as long as people like listening to it. But I want the listeners to do the work. To support us, and that requires such things as, hey, this is the movie we're going to do, watch the movie before you listen to the episode, because I don't want to skew people's opinions of the movie before also, they the watch it. Also, the thing, too, is, like, most of these movies, with the exception of, you know, Spontaneous, uh, you know, that you yeah. said that one came out in 2020. Yeah. I mean, most, last, almost, last year, almost all of these movies have been released in the past that we're going to yeah. cover. Like... And a lot of these movies are like, 
like Pulp Fiction's a classic. Yeah, Cabin yeah. Cabin in the Wood. In, in that episode, I argued it's a modern classic. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of these movies, you should have just already fucking seen them. Oh, like, yeah, not, no, yeah. no offense to the listener. I'm not trying to, like, be dismissive or put yeah. you down. But, like, come on, y'all. You, sh- you should have seen most of these movies already. Yeah. And, you know, um, but I'm going to need people to listen to this show. I'm going to need them to do the work, such as liking the Facebook page, sharing the Facebook page. You know, if yeah. we we want to take this podcast, we, we've just, like I said, started up with Podbean. We're going to make this um, no, like a little it. bit more yeah. legit. And yeah. then what we're going to do is um, Podbean is going to put us on um, Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. which is what I use. They're going to put us on Spotify. Yeah. They're gonna, um, they're gonna, you know, I, I don't know if they're gonna put us on YouTube. I've heard some places do that, and then they're going to, you know, and then we're gonna need people to rate us. We're gonna need people to review us. I could put our episodes on YouTube on my YouTube account if you want okay. to. You can go for it, but uh, we need this to be more of a grass, grassroots campaign, and we will record a lot more content. You know, we mm-hmm. just need to know what people want us to do we don't want to run out of ideas uh and get behind in episodes but we also need people to you know if if i'll 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 make bets like uh, oh if you can get us to 100 likes we'll do this if you can get us to 150 likes we'll we'll you know someone else and i'm gonna i'm gonna think of stuff for this and you, you can help out too I mean, I'm not trying to take the charge, but yeah. someone had a someone had uh, uh, some constructive criticism on that. We should have like uh, tropes or like recurring segments. Like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I I, yeah. I, I agree. I, I'm going to try to to brainstorm some, but I, I think it would be easy to to. to there's something we can come up with conceptually that should fit like every movie. Well, we we can uh, like recurring bits or yeah, we could do recurring a bit right now where we would consider this. Uh, if we considered this a disaster movie, what was the best disaster movie we've ever seen? And I would say the best disaster movie I've ever seen. I really liked uh, the two that comes to mind are uh, Dante's Peak. I thought was really good. Uh, I think. Uh, I think Pierce Brosnan's in that. And then Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. Those are both really, really good disaster movies. Daylight with Sylvester Stallone was pretty good. Wouldn't you consider Armageddon a, d- a disaster movie? Yeah, but I didn't like it. Really? I didn't like it. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Steve, Steve Buscemi's great in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve Buscemi's just great. He's great in Con Air. Yes. But if you would put this as an alien movie, I know, I think you and I probably have... Uh, the the same top two alien movies, I would say mine would be Alien and the Thing. I would agree with you. Yeah, I would say we have the exact same top two alien movies. I wonder what a third one would be, but off the top of my head, Alien and the Thing are kind of neck and neck. I thought Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It's a classic. Thought it was okay. It's a little slow paced for some people. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't love it. I remember watching an alien movie called Fire in the Sky. And it was about a guy who got abducted. It was based on true themes. And Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Couldn't get through it. That was the movie I was trying to think of earlier. When I was thinking of the concept of, you know, there's like an alien something, but you never like actually see yeah. that. Yeah. That, that's a good concept. I like that. That's I would say, spooky. I would say my third favorite alien movie is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's... We have the same top three then? No, I, I don't know if I would put Killer Clowns in my top three. I would say... Top three alien movies. Definitely alien. Definitely the thing. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Close Encounters might be my top three. All right. I, that's a good one. It was great watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space because I remember that came out when I was like four or five. That was on like HBO real heavy, and I watched it, and I was like, wow, I don't like clowns now. That's cool. <laughs> but I remember it being like dark and silly and me liking it for that. Right. Like uh, the shadow puppet scene when they were making like a dinosaur shadow puppet that eats the right. elderly couple on the bench. And I was like, oh, I love this movie. This movie's great. And uh, like, I remember buying it because I found it on DVD, like secondhand. And making my wife watch it, and then like maybe half hour through the movie, she's like, "Wait, this movie's tongue in cheek. Like it's trying to be campy." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah." And then she's like, "Oh, okay, this movie's good." And you I'm like, actually, "You didn't like it until then." She was like, "Well, actually, you know what? Taking Mars, it serious, I didn't like it." Mars Attacks might be my my third favorite alien movie. Now that I'm thinking, that about might it. be that's my a, fourth. That's a fucking good one. That would probably be. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. That would be... Uh, did you ever see the meme that was Billy Joel at the piano? Yeah. And, and it was like, you're going to have... Attack, attack, attack. <laughs> like, this motherfucker is spitting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you see the meme that says, man, for a song about the harmonica man, uh, the... For a song called the piano, piano Man, Man, the guy with the harmonica is sure oh, will shut that I, I, I have I have this whole thing on Piano Man that I like to go into whenever people bring that up. Like, oh, it's such a such a brilliant poetic song. It sounds so good, but like, if you break down the lyrics, there is so much in that song that doesn't make sense. What's a real estate novelist? Uh, the people that come and put bread in his jar and ask him, "Man, what are you doing here?" Why are they asking him that? They know he's the Piano Man. They know he plays at this bar. Why are they asking him what he's doing here? What are you doing here? Why? Why are you like? Why are you still like not not famous? Here? Oh, okay, what, That's... man. And you do know they're not putting literal bread in this jar. No, right? I know they're not like putting literal bread. No, I know that. <laughs> no, it's more so the what are you doing here? Yeah. That, I always thought that that was like. I, well, I'm, Billy, I'm impressed he, he's still playing he plays at, the bar. at the bar. Okay, yeah. that makes that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it's funny to see someone play piano man on guitar. <laughs> acoustic guitar like how full keys do it <laughs> i'll sit and listen to the whole that. thing oh i've seen it and it does not translate well i saw a white guy with a beard uh with an acoustic guitar do an acoustic cover of uh biggie small's juicy i think that's a trend that just needs to just stop huh? Add that to the list of things white people do and hipsters do that just fucking piss us off. One time a woman at work called me a hipster. Oh, I hate that shit. And I was angry about it. And then I went through verbally. I'm like, why do you think I'm a hipster? And she's like, well, you know, you with, you know, your beard. And I'm like, yeah, I'm lazy. I don't want to shave. And she's like, and you're obsessed with coffee. And I'm like, I love coffee. And I have a beard. And I love thrift stores. And I like obscure music. But I've been to, I've been into all that shit way before it was cool. God damn it. Yeah, I am a hipster. <laughs> like, yeah. knowing that I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I've, I've always been into this stuff. Uh, maybe it does make me a hipster. <laughs> yeah, Hipsters don't think I'm a hipster, so I mean... God, I hate that term. Oh, yeah, well, I also have been to a few punk shows where people with unicycles show up with curly mustaches. And No offense, Ryan, I know you're learning to ride a unicycle, and we just let that go on you. <laughs> that's not a hipster thing, that's just a Ryan quirk. <laughs> Do you know Ryan was... Bought a unicycle, drunkenly bought a unicycle, and was like, well, this came, I'm going to learn this. He said uh, for Halloween one year, he wants to go as Dat Boy. Oh, God, that's great. And he says, well, I have a trumpet, I can go as Dude Dude Skeleton. He just wants to go as memes for Halloween. That's, that rhymes funny. (laughs) We could let that shit go for Ryan, but, you know. Uh, All right, well... I, I don't I don't have a, a, a sign off yet. Oh, I, I, I make the sign offs and I, I, I put them at the end of these. So, okay, so sounds fair. Worry. Less I have to do. I'm not going to edit this out because it's funny and kind of <laughs> meta. I actually there was there was another episode that I was editing and you did this sort of the same thing. You were like, oh, we, we don't have a sign off, and then I then I put the little sign off I made as close to that as I possibly could. Good. So it's you saying we don't have a sign off right I, into I, me I being think, like, that's all, folks. I think it's great <laughs> how I uh, what was it that the Beatles did? Uh, She's so heavy. They they cut it in the middle of a chord. Yeah. I think you should like cut every episode in the middle of me saying something like somewhat poetic. Like, <laughs> you know what I really don't like about humpback whales? <laughs> just, it's like, what does it feel like about humpback whales? We'll never know. For a name like humpback whales, they're sure not erotic enough for me. Jesus Christ. And on, <laughs> on that note, we'll see you next week. Hey folks, thanks for joining me and Phil this week. Join us again next week when our film is going to be 2020's exploding teen drama, Spontaneous. You've been listening to That Can't Be the End.